What's up guys, Everything Apple Pro here, and I'm going to be comparing every single model of every iPad ever made all in one video. This is a video I've been wanting to make for a very long time, just never really got around to it. Basically, I want to give you an idea about the timeline of the iPad, from where it began to where it's at now, and how all of these iPads changed in between. Now, it all started with the original iPad. This wasn't Apple's first tablet, it was its first successful one. They launched the Newton tablets back in the early 90s. They never really took off. The reason why the iPads were so successful despite everybody's hatred over them i mean they just thought it was a bigger iphone but it was so much more than that they were useful they were portable the battery life was good there were applications there was so much you could do with them just to give you an idea of how long it's been since the original ipad was launched the 3gs was the current smartphone when it did appear on the market before there were tablets that just weren't very successful people didn't understand why they needed them in their lives steve jobs revolutionized the tablet market he showed people that the ipad did have a place in your day-to-day -day life and this is the original iPad 1 it's built like a tank the battery life is still good to this day this thing was just made to last it really surprises me to this day how low spec the iPad 1 was yet how optimized it was and it could pretty much do everything you threw at it so along comes the iPad 2 with a revolutionary new design tapered edges same casing however it's a lot thinner a lot lighter and definitely easier to hold than the original iPad now this is by far the best iPad I I have ever personally used. This thing was miles ahead of anything on the market and it still to this day is relevant. There's a reason Apple continued to sell these long after the iPad 3 and iPad 4. This is just one of the best tablets ever made and it supports the latest version of iOS. So Apple's doing great at this point and then they release the iPad 3. How is it possible for Apple to go backwards? The iPad 3 was heavier, worse battery life, and in some cases experienced worse performance than the iPad 2. Now this is all in exchange for that retina display. Some say it's worth it, some say it wasn't. Funny how Apple went backwards on this iPad. The thickness was the worst part. This thing was hard to hold. Next came the iPad 4. It's really what the iPad 3 should have been. The primary change is the addition of the new proprietary lightning connector. Just a little bit of a spec bump and it's actually a little bit heavier. Now, the funny thing is that I can't find any mention of this guy on Apple's website. It's like they forgot it existed because it was so insignificant. It took a little while but of course as a technology technology catches up, Apple makes thinner and lighter stuff. The iPad Air it was called that for a reason, it was a thinner, lighter iPad, screen had less bezel, and it was a less reflective display. Overall, a gorgeous iPad, very well performing, still selling today, I mean these things are amazing. I don't expect this guy to get outdated for a while, the performance is stunning, it's going to be around for a while. It's hard to imagine how much better the iPad could get, well the iPad Air 2 was released, it's a thinner and lighter version of the iPad Air, not only that, but how much power it packs is incredible, all in such a thin frame. I can't even imagine what Apple will do next for the next iPad. What are they going to have to do to get people to buy more of these? It seems like they've reached a barrier. How much better could it possibly get? Triple core, 2 gigs of RAM, 64-bit architecture, and in such a small frame. This really is one of the most impressive tablets on the market right now. And let's not forget about the iPad mini series. So like the original iPad, nobody really thought this one would take off. Well, it did. Apple filled a gap in the market with this medium-sized iPad. So the very first one was running a 1 gigahertz Apple A5 chip. It wasn't even an X version, just the standard one taken straight from the iPhone. I mean, it was adequate. I still use mine every single day. The second generation, definitely a speed bump, 1.3 gigahertz, a lot more capable. And then the third generation just implemented a Touch ID sensor, really nothing new. The specs were almost exactly the same as the iPad mini 2. All right, now that we've finished our little history lesson, let's go ahead and compare all these and see how they've changed speed-wise throughout the generations. Okay, so let's go ahead and run three tests. A startup test, a Geekbench, and a Wi-Fi speed test. I gotta tell you, this video gets harder and harder to make the more iPads there are, so I'm not looking forward to next year. So the way I've got this set up is they're all connected to one power source, just a multi-bank charger, and they're all being powered on at the very same time. It is important to consider that the newer the device, the more it has to load and the less resources it has to load it and all these devices except for the iPad 1 are running the same firmware. That's pretty crazy. So first place goes to the iPad 1, then the iPad Air 2, iPad Mini 2, iPad Air, iPad Mini 3, iPad 4th generation, and then the iPad Mini 1, and the iPad 2, and lastly comes the iPad 3. iPad 3 being my least favorite device out of all of these. Nobody likes you, iPad 3. Just stay off. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and perform a Geekbench. Now the iPad Air 1 is the only device that doesn't support this, sadly. So let's go ahead and run it on all other devices. And so results are in. Now, of course, we can expect high results from the iPad Air 2, but to me what was impressive was that the iPad 2 was matching the results of the iPad 3, even though the processor and RAM specs are very different. So as you can see with this Geekbench, there is definitely progression from all devices above the iPad 3. I mean, it's really impressive how far Apple has come since the original iPad. And the very last test is a Wi-Fi speed test. So the router is an airport extreme. All of these devices are hooked up to it and each test will be performed individually. Now here are the results. As you guys can see, there's not much that's changed in between every single one. Now take note, that's because my router is in my office. If it was further away, there would definitely be more of a difference as the technology for range does increase between these devices iPad 3 is a downgrade, like always, because it sucks. And guys, there you have it. That's the complete evolution of the iPad to date. Six generations of iPads, including three of the iPad mini. You know, it's come a long way, and where it's at right now with the iPad Air 2, it's just simply incredible. And I salute Apple. They've done a great job. I just wish there was a little bit more innovation. Then again, who am I to say that? Hope you guys learned a thing or two. Hope you enjoyed this video. Have a great day. Peace.